Hello there, it's me, Sari, here again, and today I would like to thank We Are Memory Keepers for sending me a punch board as well as some punch inserts for spiral punches and disc punches. I thought I'd show you a couple of these and just to show you how this punch board works, I really do like it. I have been looking for something like this for a long time. And the thing is that you can basically make holes for any kind of planner. And I'm sure you could even use these holes for, let's say, binders and such. And you could just try things out in an easy peasy way. I, th I hope I'll be able to show you two different ways of actually making this work. There's a set of different kinds of hole punches when it comes to different kinds of spiral bound albums. As you can see, I've got th four, three different kinds of holes to this. And the good thing about this is that you can actually make the holes, you can take it out and you can put it back again, perhaps in a different place or so. So you have three different options there. And then there is also something that is called disc punches and I haven't got those proper disc albums but I thought I'd show you how you can make these work anyway. So let's get started. First things first. I like the colour, I like the portability of this, I like the easiness that you can actually pick these out. You have the confetti of the die cuts there. If you want to, I mean, it, it's going to be flat like this. If you want to, you could, of course, I think, store some of these in here. But since I do have more than these four, there's really no use in having it like that. So I think I actually prefer to put these in a plastic box or something just to know where they are. And it's a good thing that they are color-coded, so I know which go to which kind of punching. One might think that if one really would have wanted to make things simple, they could have had round tops for the round holes, perhaps. And perhaps they could have mimicked it with, let's say, a, 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 a sticker or something there. But still, it's easy peasy. I'm not going to complain about that, really. There are some measurements at the bottom, and there are some directions also of how you should go about this. I think that it's a little bit tedious to just turn it over and just look at things. So, of course, you could pick it out. I mean, there's a flap there, so you can actually pick it out. And you could have this one open. So all the confetti is going to end up on your surface. And it's a clean, easy clean surface so like that. So you could have it like that. But I think that there's a benefit of actually having this at the bottom because they have the silicone feet that makes things or it makes this platform stay in its place. And I'm just going to pop it back like so. And you see, it's going to stay in its place in a more easy fashion. So what I did was, since I'm getting older, I see, I find that it's a rather, it's, it's, it's getting harder and harder to know the numbers and seeing the numbers. I mean, of course I can see the numbers here, but when I was sitting in a sort of a darker area, I had a hard time finding things out from these texts. Then there is also a com an, an extra um, sticker that you could put here if you want to, or you could put it here if you want to. And here are the paper sizes and the alignments of where you put your punches for the disc punches. And I found it rather difficult to read these numbers, especially the pink on gold. It wasn't an easy job. I really had to use a light and or a lamp or anything and, and just really tilt and make this work. So I would have preferred something black on white. So what I did was I actually wrote this paper. If you want, I could send it to you. I could make it into a PDF file or something. Just email me and I will give this or send this to you just for free. Just because I find it easier to work with it. But... I wrote off all the text and everything, so I do know in which way to operate. And then I put all the different kinds of planner styles here. So they have, they're covering both the two and three ring albums, Filofax, different sizes, Webster's, Carpe Diem, Hello Forever, Recollections, 
four ring euro A5 and A4, but you mustn't com combine this or mix, interpret this one as the A4 fold I think of. I'll be showing you that later if I don't forget about this. And then there are some more. And the final ones down here, these are the spiral ones. So I have actually, I have uh, edited this paper, so if you want, you can get a new, a new one. But I'm struggling with this. Perhaps you can, you can help me out, you, you inch knowers out there. The paper size column is here. So I'm, I'm fine with the 8 by 8 inches, 5 and a half, 8 and a half, and so forth. But when it comes to 3.2 inches and 4.7 inches, I really don't know how to measure up the paper with those measurements. So I've made actually a fourth column here. It's going to be the third, but a fourth regarding from these, where I'm going to end up putting the numbers how I see them. So if I see a number that is, let's say, 4.25, times six by seven six by seventy five I'm going to write it as four and a quarter and six and a quarter for me that's easier to know but I'm not sure how to interpret all of these things so what I'll do is I'll show you the examples of the things that I have at home and then of course there's a column of its own for where to put your punches some of these have only two punches and then you're just going to flip the paper and I believe you're going to flip the paper with all of these so let's get started with some of these fun things. And what I did on this paper also was that I actually colored in those same measurements. So you, so it's easy to know that these are going to be these are going to be the same, even though perhaps you know, well, the measurements are all the same also. So that, that was something that I fancied making up here. And then there are some uh, notes here about when it comes to one of these. I shouldn't, I should skip the step six, six, I believe it was here somewhere. And when it comes to this one, it's ISO 838. Things vary, so I need to skip the two dots altogether somehow. And I'm not sure if I even have those, so I'm just going to skip it altogether, I believe. So let's get started. It's a really nice planner punch board. I like it a lot. And let's get started with some round holes. And let's get started with a final fact that I've got here. This is from Webster's Pages. And what I did was, I took it out like this. And I actually, in the my first attempt was to just put this, which is from a file of facts, Webster's Pages. And I put it here in order to know, just to see if, if I could make the holes freehand, so to speak. So let's say you have something you could copy and mimic. You could try to make it work just by placing the paper or the hole punches alongside where the holes are. And I believe that is all right. It does look a little bit funky when you're looking at this. They don't seem exactly in line. I mean, for me, there's a bigger gap there but still it works. And then when I look at this, and if I'm going to compare it to some of these measurements, I see that it didn't really fit because the paper I had cut was six and three fourths or 6.75. And that made my measurements at six, 16 and 26. And I believe I haven't actually got those. So let's see what I have here. I've got seven, 17 and 26. So I mean, there might be some problems here. So if I'm going to go with the, with the numbers that I put in, I have the seven and I have the 16. I need to move it up just a little bit like that. And then I have the 26. So in either way, I'm getting a wider gap in between one of these. And the thing is also, if you compare the size of the hole You can see that the punch itself punches far bigger holes than the ones from the Filofax does. You can see there's a, they're almost twice the size. So let's see what I can do with this. I believe I do have a paper that I can do with some punching with. And what I've done here is that I have the paper, it is 6.75 six inches or 6 and 3 quarters. And the good thing about this is that if I'm going to show it to you, 
there are some numbers and everything here. I hope you do see them. I mean, if you have it in your hand, you are going to see them more properly. Of course, I could add some white pen. I could mark these out with a black pen, just drag it along, uh, along, along there, just to make them pop a little bit better. We can also see that there's a notch here. I, I believe the notch is a good word for this. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your paper just inside the gap. I mean, the punches in themselves have an opening there. So now I need to put that back into the 16. So there's an opening there, which you can slide your paper into. And you can actually butt it up against that notch. It's going to be secure there. And I'm going to just put, put down the lid like so and push. And I'm using quite a heavy paper, so if I wanted to, I could make this into a sort of flap kind of paper. So now I've punched my first holes, and now I need to just flip this over and uh, repeat the same step. So now I have those holes there, just to make sure, and I'm using my centimetre guide here. It's almost two centimetres there, and it's almost two centimeters there. I did some punching when went with some some other other measurements and I found that the there wasn't weren't properly properly made. So if I would like to put this into a sort of filofax looking here we are you can see I also have an old but goodie I mean just look at that leathery wonderful I think this is what this was my was my first filofax. Of course I have changed the you know things. I think I have taken the bits from this golden Webster's page thingy and I put it in here. And then of course you could, let's see if I can show you what I'm doing here. Open it up like that. It's a bit tighter but you can still fit these in there. So I think, I mean it's the same measurements you can, you can use for a file of facts and Webster's pages. So that's where you are. But mem remember that the holes are much bigger so let's say I would like to make an insert page. I just took an A4 size paper, put some water tape there, and then I did some scoring just to have something I could actually fold out like this. Let's say I were to make a schedule or make let's make a week, a plan week, planned week like this. I could do that with just this method. I'll have put on some water tape on one side. Let's see if I can make the holes like I want to. I could actually fold this one out and since I'm thinking of using this one in a planner of sorts I might as well just start with that side. And it punches really nicely through one layer of washer tape. Perhaps I should, let's see if I can find it, I could actually put in another layer of washer tape. So in one place or two, I might actually have a double layer of washi tape. I think I'll just put in another. So I'm going to change my recipe and I'll be ending up with three layers of washi tape in some bits and pieces. And I'm going to fold those in and I'm going to tuck this one in there, butt it against there. Let's see if it works. It works beautifully. So this is a nice way of actually strengthening your papers and have something to spruce them up when you are browsing through, let's say, a calendar like this. Where are you now? So all of a sudden, perhaps I haven't measured this completely as I should. Let's see if I compare it. Actually, I didn't measure. I did actually make it longer. So that's the reason for it not fitting there properly. So that's a really good reminder for you. Make sure that your papers are of the exact size when you start, before you start punching your things. I'm going to sign, uh, continue now with something for a two ring album. The paper is eight by eight, eight by eight long. And the punching holes are supposed to be at 20 and 72. And in this case, I didn't get a perfect result because there was 4.5 centimeters here and there were 4.6 to 7 centimeters there. So what I did was instead of instead of leaving, instead of having the 20 and the 72 
still in their place. I actually just removed it for the second. So let's get started. I'm still going to use these. And just look at that beautiful confetti with the washi tape there. So, so 20 and 72. So I'm going to do that for the first one. 20 and 72. And I need to go all the way up there. Can you see that there's, it's on 72? And then there it is on 20. So I'm going to do my first set of holes. And the paper is supposed to be eight, and I did, I did put a mark there so I know where I am. So I'm putting it up there again. I'm sorry, perhaps you're not seeing this properly. I hope you do. I am here with the paper. I'm going to do the first punch. And now I start to think that I might be mad. I'm talking about this is a two ring hole it isn't a three ring hole so there it is let's see what, what what I will end up with if it's the same thing as I had the first time so I'm having that one at 4.5 and the washi tape got stuck there and let's see if I'm putting it and you can let's see here I'm just going to show you so in this case it doesn't make sense now does it so I'm butting that ruler against the paper and it does say 4.5. The beginning of the hole is at 4.5. If I turn the paper over and I'm butting it up as, as a end gun, and you can see that it's going to be 4.7 or something. It's not going to be 4.5. So that's where I learned that. Okay, let's do this one more time. Make the first hole and do the second. And let's measure these things again. Let's see if I made it correctly this time. So this one says 4.5 approximately. And this one now says 4.5. So it's a better fit when you do it like this. So there's something I really need to um, change here. So let's see. I'm sure I could perhaps I could try to sh shift it to the last, last hole, which is going to be 73. I could try it out, couldn't I? So let's see. If I'm going to do it like this. So I have 4.5 there. And it's a 4.5. So it actually needs to be 73, not 72. And I'm going to do the change even here. So I have a two ring album. 72 is going to be changed to 73. At least where I'm standing right now. So I'm going to do the change for the two ring album there. So let's move these away so I know what I have done and haven't done. And I'm going to move ahead to a three ring album. I mean, basically it's the same thing really. I copied this method and the first time I did and I left the second punch you can see that there has been a second I mean they haven't punched in, in the same place and I was thinking perhaps I didn't cut the paper to size but I did so it can't have been that so what I did the next time was I had the same size of paper but having punched the two holes flipped over I took away the second punch and that in that way I actually managed to get it to fit and to be to make the holes to be in the same place perhaps not perfectly in the same place mind you but it's still going to work in that file so you might need to do some adjusting so now i'm going to talk to you a little bit about the what i was t thinking of a4 when it can when it stand when it says four ring euro in my mind i went to our european folders that are looking like that look like this they have the holes and the bindings in the center whilst this one does make has the measurements for holes like that so they are going to be holes equally e evenly spaced throughout the paper like so so that's something i really wanted to make sure that you didn't that you didn't think it was the same thing because you see that the holes are in a different place so one can read it through 
I'm going to have an A4 sized paper, which in this says it's going to be 8.3 times 11.7 inches. And I really can't make that one out. Of course, I know the measurements in Swedish, or let's say European, or the proper way of looking at from my view. And then the holes were supposed to be at 9 and 49 in order to make these. So what it's going to do is put 9 and 49, flip the paper 9 and 49. So you have to do punching. Two punches there. So let's move ahead from those round holes and let's start working with some fun holes. So I do have this one and I just have a small little booklet here which is bound together with a spiral. And I made this and this is a nice way actually making some sort of a decorative edge on your card perhaps or perhaps even a photo or something, a photo mat. And what you need to do in order to make it work for this one is, first off, you need to check will these spirals match up with this one. These are called three holes per inch, or this one is two holes, three holes and four holes per inch. Because the measurement up here, in here, it's, it's an inch and that is sort of 2.54 centimeters. So one inch there and it fits three holes and that one fits two holes. So I know that this one might do, no it doesn't, so I need to move ahead to this one. So when I'm lining my spiral above the punch itself, I know that this is the one I should pick if I want to make an insert page for that. The same thing goes for this, there's a peg here which I am going to put in the center. And then I'm just going to take the paper and align it with the center guide there. So I'm just going to put the paper in as far as I can. And you might, I mean, you, you are tempted to push there, but I'm thinking that you're going to have too hard a time. So it's better to just put the lid down. Now I've done so, I'm going to shift this paper over so I can find where there is a match for the I mean this punch has a mark here that this is where you should you should shift or move your paper to so I'm doing so and still I'm I'm eager to press there but I need to remember to put the lid down and I'm, then I can actually move it a couple of steps and a couple of steps so it's getting quicker and quicker And I'm thinking that this might work depending on how far out on the paper I'm um, on, on the other one I'm putting this one in. And of course, you could do your prop regular holes with, let's say, a cinch from your memory keepers, and then just do, use your scissors to cut them up. But it's really nice to have this kind of a punch because then you can make your dividers and everything in an easy method and you can just take it out and put it back again. Of course, the more you are going to take it out, the more it's going to get worn. Let's see, that was that. Let's move ahead using another of these punches. Now I know it's the big one because it fits like so, doesn't it? So let's do the same thing, put it in the center. And I'm just going to use a scrap piece of paper, line it up, push. And I only have one of those holes. So I need to put it there, make sure that it's in the center. Push. 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 And I might as well just take the last one. I didn't get anything. Well, I got a little notch there, kidding it. So the same same thing goes for this one. I just want to put put it in there, and I could make this into a tab page or something. So it's a really nice way to go about it. And 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 it's even possible to make it work with a spiral like this. The same method, but you're going to change it for this, the pink one. And let's see. I'm going to change now to the this thingy. Let's see. So let's say you don't really know what size of paper you want to use or something like that. In this case I have measured the paper. It's going to be five and a half or 5.5. My memory is going to end up here so I need to pause and I'll come back. Let's see if I can fold these two videos together later on. Hello, I'm back here. Let's see if I can get back to where I was 
going to talk about. In this case, I'm using a Filofax refillable notebook album, so to speak. And this one is a small size, and the paper itself, it's going to be five and a half inches. And what I did with this was, I just took this paper, put it here, and I'm going to go for these pink and brown ones. And what I did was I just tried to find a place for where I'm going to put it. And I put one there. And I put one there. And one there, I believe. And one there. And I'm just going to make sure. These look a little bit crooked. So just to make sure, I'm thinking that this might be a really good fit, although perhaps I ought to shift the pink one a little. I'm not sure, it does look rather right. So I'm going to take a fresh new page, line it up there, and give it a squeeze like that. And I'm working with a, I think it's a 300 or perhaps 200 gram watercolor paper, so it punches really nicely. So let's see if it works. Well, the holes aren't exactly where I wanted them to be. So perhaps I ought to do a little bit of shifting. I'm not sure even if I even wrote those numbers down here, but I did write them down here, I did. So I actually did write them down there. So let's see where I went wrong. I did have, because the first time I did, I actually made it work. I actually managed to put them in the right place. So I need to find out where I went wrong. I do have the 5 and I do have the 18 and I have the 31 and I have the 43 and I have the 56. So I did everything right. So how come I didn't get them to match? Let's see. The thing is that if I'm going to put this one in here now, it works. So I could actually make it work with that. So that's an easy way for you to actually just take whatever kinds of holes you have on your paper, line it up, put the holes there and make it work. So let's see, I do have something here from a big book. It's a multi-line Grafoplas book that I found in Spain, Barcelona. It's a Carpe book. I don't think I have any Carpe book here. A5. Yeah, I have the Carpe Diem. It says 11, 21, 31, but I haven't used those because I have four holes. So it doesn't really make sense. So what I did was... I put them on 3 and 33, I believe. I'm going to take those away. I'm going to go back to a regular hose. I'm going to take those out. So I'm going to put in on 3 and 33. There I am. I hope you can see it. 3 and 33. And if I were to, I think I didn't actually take one of these pages out. So I'm going to do it like that, just so you know that I haven't used that side. So I'm using up a clean paper like this, putting it in, lining it up. And you know what? I just discovered that there's a stop. There's a, this one goes there, so you know that you can put the paper in, but there's also a stop here, which is a good thing, because then you're not going to have your paper crooked. So you can actually stop it there, push, turn it over, and push. So there I have my four holes. The papers themselves, let's see, with this binder come, with lots of holes that I don't know why, but perhaps these papers are matching for other projects as well. And there you can see that I can actually make it work with this binder. And did I have anything more to show? It doesn't seem like I did. 
So I do hope you get your hands on these. I mean, if you have more, let's say, Philo Fact products or perhaps Webster's Page products or even one of these that I have lined here, because just I want to show you all the measurements that are in this product's backside. Hide swap, Instax, and the Mumbai and the circle and everything. So there you have it. I hope I'll be able to merge these two videos together so you just have one video to look at and my recommendations i mean five points or five stars out of five definitely i was complaining a little bit about the color choice for this i mean just thinking about elderly people with their vision going bad year after year perhaps black on white could be a better choice although i do understand why they have chosen the gold and, and the white because it's a pretty look it matches their ambition with these as well so i can understand it but if i'm going to complain about anything that's that basically and the fact that i don't really know how to read these numbers so i'm just going to keep it safe and go for if let's say i have a template i'm just going to go by that and make my own measurements like that so that's basically it i'm going to sign off right now and i hope you start punching away out there bye bye and thank you we are memory keepers